Hey everyone, I'm Nick, and this is Software Development with C++. So in this episode of the series, we're going to be talking about auto formatting with Clang Format. So one of the things that is often nice to have inside of our projects, especially as they get larger, is consistent formatting. So ideally, we'd like every single file inside of our project, which may have you know dozens or even hundreds of different source files, we would like for them all to have the same formatting, right? It just makes the code a bit easier to look at and skim. Now, unfortunately, you know, this can be a bit tricky, right? Once we start working with you know, multiple different developers that are contributing to a project that all come from their own backgrounds and have their own stylistic preferences. And it would be a really, really huge waste of time to you know, manually teach people how to format code um, and then go through the process of reviewing code specifically for formatting errors. This is really just a process we want to spend zero manual effort on if possible. So fortunately, we can you know, basically get this effect by using tools like auto formatters, and that includes things like Clang Format. So tools that will do this formatting for us where we you know, don't even have to think about um, what the rules are. We can just run the auto formatter to reformat a file. Okay, so we're going to be looking at you know, the basic use of Clang Format with a poorly formatted file here, all right, this main.cpp. So we can go ahead and you know, concatenate that to the screen here. And you can see that, you know, what we really have is just a simple example of creating a main function that creates an array, sorts it, and then we just print it out, um, you know, all the values followed by spaces and then by a new line character before returning zero. But we've made some rather poor um, uh, formatting choices here, right? So we create a std array over three lines, our std sort is over three lines. We have this big long line for this range-based for loop, and even our return uh, zero is spaced over, you know, two lines. So a bit of a, you know, kind of reduced to the absurd example here. Now, it would be really annoying to go through manually line by line and try to fix all these problems and do it in some consistent way, right? And this is especially true if we have, you know, multi-hundreds or thousands of lines um, inside of a single file. And we want to make sure that everything looks the same across, you know, dozens of different files. So what we can use instead is something like Clang Format. Now, to get Clang Format, right, on most, you know, Linux machines, you can do something like sudo apt get install uh, clang dash format, right, to, to get that executable on your machine. And there's, you know, a number of different versions you can generally choose from, right? So you can just do this to, you know, get it on your local machine, and then you should be able to run uh, just clang format, right? You may need to restart your terminal, right, in order to get the, you know, automatic completion of clang format. But, you know, in its simplest form, we can just call clang format on a file like main.cpp. What it will do is it will format it um, and then print out the formatted output to uh, stood out. Um, so if we go ahead and do that, you can see that by just running clang format, it gives us some nice pretty code here. So it fixed a lot of our uh, poor stylistic choices in terms of formatting. So it even did things like sorted our includes for us, right? They're now in alphabetical order. You can see our you know, creation of our std arrays on a single line, our std sorts on a single line. We have a much prettier range-based for loop. And, you know, even things like, um, you know, this return zero, right, is now on a single line. So it, it fixed a lot of those poor stylistic choices for us. And we didn't really have to do anything other than run our formatter. Now, there's a number of different kind of preset styles that you can pick from. So on the right-hand side of the screen, I have the Clang LVM documentation here for Clang format. And you can see there's a section on this style option. So you can also see this by just running uh, Clang format dash dash help right on your local machine. So you can see that there are a number of preset options like LVM, GNU, Google, Chromium, Microsoft, Mozilla, WebKit, right, and so on and so forth. So here what we can do is we can run Clang Format again, except this time we'll choose a different style here. So maybe instead we'll choose a style equal to, you know, GNU. Right, you can see we get a slightly different result here. So now our main function looks a bit different. It has a return type followed by the you know, name and, you know, parameter list here, right, in these parens. Um, our curly brackets, right, are on a different line than, say, our function here, and that's also true for, say, our for loop down here. Um, so slightly different stylistic choices. So you'll find that these different styles or preset styles, um, they can look slightly differently depending on your code, right? Um, so we can try something else as well. So we can, you know, try styles equal to, you know, something like WebKit. And again, we get a slightly different style, right? These really all just, you know, personal preferences by these different organizations, right? Um, I think in general, if you have, you know, control over choosing the style, you know, pick whichever one, you know, looks right for you or, and works best for you. A lot of times, um, 
uh, in industry, a company will just choose some style, they might tweak it a bit, um, and then they'll just have that set style for everyone to use, right? Um, and, and that gets us into another thing that we can do with the style is that we can actually dump out all of the options for these styles um, to a file called this dot clang format file. So what we can do is, you know, we can take something like, uh, you know, rem we'll remove this uh, main.cpp from here. We'll select a style like Google, and then we'll do dash dash dump dash config here. And it'll actually dump all of the config options that we have, right? So you can see this is really where all of these formatting choices are made, right? So we have things like these include categories, so how we're going to sort our include statements. We have, you know, things about, you know, continuation indent with um, and different arguments um, or, or options related to spaces and, and line breaks, um, all of these different align options and so on and so forth. So there's a huge amount of customizability when it comes to these formatters, right? But in a lot of times, right, we'll just use some default style um, or we'll do, you know, you know, a, a, a minor edit, right, of these style files. So what we can do with these style files is we can dump it. So I'll just redirect this output to a dot clang dash format file, right? So now when I go ahead and run something like uh, clang format to format some file, instead of selecting, you know, one of these preset styles, I can set my style equal to file here. And what it will do is it will, it will pick up the style from that clang format file. So you can see over here on the right hand side, as part of the options, you can see that we can select file here to load style configuration from a dot clang format file. And one of the parent directories of the source file here. So, you know, this can be a very useful thing, especially if you want to make edits to, you know, one of these styles, like if you want to ch slightly change or configure the Google style to be more towards our personal preferences, right? We can dump that config, make some changes, and then we can save it and keep it and, and version control it, right, inside of our project. So here, we'll just go ahead and run this with styles, style equal to file, and you can see that it reformats our code, and this is going to be in the Google style. Now, another thing that we can do here is you can see that there's an option for fallback style as well. So in case, you know, your formatter doesn't find, say, the file that, um, you know, it's looking for, right? So this dot clang format file that we're, we're using right now, you can set a fallback style. So, okay, you didn't find the dot clang format file that you maybe wanted. You can still maybe fall, you know, fall back to something like LVM or fall back to something like Google. So you can set that option as well. And of course, you know, a very useful option, we don't typically want to dump all of these results necessarily to um, should see out, right? We often want to just change the um, files, right, that we're trying to format, right? We want them to just update it. So we can use this dash I option, right? And this is for in place edits to the, the file specified. So we can go ahead and run clang format on main.cpp and we'll just pass the dash I option. So instead of, you know, um, you know, dumping the formatted output to std cout. Now, you know, you can see that it just updated our main.cpp. So now we have a nice and pretty formatted file right here. Okay, so that's kind of the basics of using these auto formatters like, uh, or an auto formatter like Clang Format. So there's a huge amount of customizability that we have in here, but really the key benefit of this is that we get to stop thinking about uh, the formatting of our code pretty much completely, right? We just completely offloaded that to a nice tool like Clang Format. And this is something that you'll often see integrated as part of some uh, continuous integration for a project. So it will automatically do a formatting check, right? And you'll often have, you know, something like, you know, maybe the make rule to automatically format all of these CPP files inside of your project, right? So you, you'll often see this embedded a lot of times uh, with the build systems and the CI systems of, you know, very large projects. Um, but that's going to go ahead and do it for today. Um, I'll go ahead and put a link uh, below the video to this uh, Clang format documentation. And of course, you can find this or any of my other examples at github.com slash coffee before arch. But that's going to go ahead and do it for today. As always, I'm Nick, and I hope you have a nice day.